Like most coastal locations, the Bridgewater Bay foreshore is vulnerable to coastal erosion and flooding. Historically, storm surges and king tides have been severe enough to warrant the construction of an informal rock wall to control coastal erosion and protect the foreshore amenities, including the road, car parks, surf club and the local dune system. Therefore, a properly engineered dynamic rock wall is necessary before investing substantial funds into renewed foreshore amenities. The rock wall is designed for future storms and if properly maintained, will be able to protect the foreshore for decades to come. The dynamic rock wall will be just over 400 metres long and will follow the alignment of the existing rock wall, which was built informally over decades. The Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning authorised this alignment following a thorough site assessment, leading to consent for the works under the Marine and Coastal Act. Rock walls are commonly used in Australia to provide a physical barrier to ongoing shoreline erosion. A nearby example is the Dutton Way seawall, which was constructed following years of coastal erosion along the foreshore. While a rock wall does not erode a beach, it does interfere with the natural beach processes and impact the natural flow of sand across and along the beach. This is sometimes observed in erosion at the end of the structure and erosion of sand in front of the rock wall after storms. This is likely to be a temporary issue at Bridgewater Bay because the beach compartment is full of a large volume of sand and the structure has been specifically designed to minimise these impacts. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the foreshore will manage any minor beach erosion, should it occur. Along the regional coastline, sand generally flows from west to east. In Portland, the flow of alongshore sand around the Cape is around 50,000 cubic metres per year, enough to fill about 20 Olympic swimming pools. The coastal erosion at Dutton Way is associated with the interruption of this alongshore sand flow by the Portland Harbour breakwaters, which prevent this flow of sand from reaching the shoreline at Dutton Way. Currently, the beach is in a building phase and is not eroding significantly. However, the volume of sand on the beach naturally fluctuates and the beach can erode when this natural sand availability is reduced. At Bridgewater Bay, the beach volume is controlled by nature and presently there are no indications of a reduction in beach volume. Coastal erosion of the cliffs to the west of the site will continue to provide uninterrupted large volumes of sand into the bay for years to come. Also, at Bridgewater Bay there are no man-made breakwater structures nearby. This is different to Dutton Way, which is located near the Portland Harbour breakwaters which act to reduce natural sand flow along the coast. The sand movements will remain natural at Bridgewater Bay. However, it is important to consider that sand volume fluctuates over time as part of the natural beach erosion and rebuilding cycles. The shape and volume of sand on the beach changes over time and is shaped by the tides and waves. Currently, there is a lot of sand on the foreshore. However, future storms could result in local beach erosion. Generally, sand flows from west to east. However, the natural rate of this sand flow along the coast is not constant. Typically, it moves in large scale sandbars and as large sand slugs. Depending on the position of these sandbars, the dry beach can become wider or narrower. During severe storms, large waves erode the sand from the dry beach dunes and deposit this sand into nearshore sandbars. This is known as the beach erosion phase. In the weeks and months following the storm, calmer waves then push the sandbar back on shore and replenish the beach. This is known as the beach accretion or beach recovery phase. These natural cycles of coastal erosion and coastal accretion are essential to a healthy and dynamic beach environment. The beach will generally recover in the weeks and months following a storm. After extreme storms, there are some localised scour effects that slow the beach recovery in front of the wall. However, this is likely to be a temporary issue at Bridgewater Bay, because the beach compartment is full of sand and there are no major man-made interruptions of the alongshore sand flow within the bay. The existing rock wall has not reduced the ability of the beach to recover after storms, 
and the proposed engineered rock wall will have a similar effect. The existing rock wall is in poor condition and was constructed reactively after storms and slowly over time. The existing structure does not meet current engineering standards and is not stable against powerful storm waves. It requires a substantial upgrade to perform effectively and manage coastal erosion. It is not physically possible to provide a lot of car parking space along the foreshore. Car parking on the beach is only authorised for the Surf Life Saving Club and for emergency vehicles. Because space along the foreshore is limited, a balance must be achieved between car parking space, public safety and the quality of public amenities. Traffic on the Surf Club hard stand must be safely managed. Pedestrian access around the car park will be provided to manage safe vehicle and pedestrian interactions. Shade, vegetation and pedestrian access along and across the rock wall are essential ingredients to preserve and improve the local amenities. Several access ramps, stairs and viewing platforms have been included in the design, all based on the master plan. The main purpose of the rock wall is to control storm erosion along the foreshore. Rather than letting the beach and dunes retreat into the foreshore car parks and threaten assets, the rock wall will provide a last line of defence against coastal erosion. While some armour rocks could be displaced from time to time, the overall shoreline position remains fixed. However, the rock wall is not a coastal levee and is not high enough to manage extreme coastal flooding events. The infrastructure behind the rock wall remains vulnerable to coastal flooding during major storm events. The renewed structure will significantly reduce the potential for coastal flooding. However, the land levels behind the wall will not be raised and the rock wall may be overtopped by breaking waves during major storms. The landside works have been designed to be resilient to the harsh coastal environment. <laughs>